Dodwell and to the applicant's agent. Mr. Dodwell raised issues about the access and the blind exit. Of course, I think it's very apparent to anybody walking out of that new gateway. Uh, and also, he's mentioned density and made reference to another nearby application. Uh, if you look at the plan on the screen, um, it's an L-shaped plot which comes to the lane between those two uh, existing dwellings on the top left, the um, house long view, which is a fairly recent construction, diagonal to the lane, and the bungalow immediately to um, the south of it. Uh, the boundaries aren't as shown on that plan, but there is a plot in between those two coming right up against the lane. Um, and that, an application was placed um, has been referred to in July 2014 um, and was finally refused on the delegation in April 2015. It's ADP 14080978. The plot which fronts onto Gorse Lane um, had access not proposed from Gorse Lane but from the rear where there's a, an existing track going back up to Roman School Lane. Um, so why was this? Well, the design and access statement and Members may be aware that with all these applications, the um, applicants and with the plans um, write a nice little piece on why the application is so good and why you should approve it. And it contains lots of remarks about um, how good the bus service is and how the school, good the schools are uh, and uh, it's not very far from the shops and all this sort of thing. But, but when it comes to the bit um, about um, access, under the heading access it says, Gorse Lane will not be utilised for vehicular access as advised by the council. And the boundary hedge trees along the lane will be retained to maintain the more rural character of this bridleway. So that is what the applicant or that other application was advised by the council only a few months ago. So, members may wish to know why this advice applies to one application fronting Gorse Lane and not to another. The design statement also includes a detailed comparison of plot sizes, and Mr. Dodwell did make some reference to densities. Um, and incidentally, the reasons for refusal of the other application were the proposed development would result in plot sizes which would be significantly smaller than prevailing plot sizes locally and be detrimental to the character of the area, contrary to policy HS10 of the rural UDP. So, bearing all this in mind, um, and while it's not a planning reason bearing in mind, we shall, I think, many people, including all petitioners, reserve the ambience of that way, which you've all seen. Bearing all this in mind, I would ask members to find reasons to refuse this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can I open this up to committee? Paul? Yes, just a comment, really, Chair. I'm just curious, I know Matthew said that obviously they. Uh, previous decision, the appeal decision was some 30 years ago and a lot's changed since then and you would expect that to be the case. But in relation to highways, which I think was the sole or primary reason why it was upheld that appeal that it should be refused, what's changed in terms of policy or indeed in terms of the structure of the highway? Thanks, Keith. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. I think um, possibly the first thing to say is that the, the previous application that was refused, um, the, the borough engineer at the time, you know, wasn't, around, wasn't around at the time, the borough engineer didn't object to that application, although it was refused um, on highway grounds, um, as stated in the reports. I've looked at this application afresh um, in terms of the, the likely traffic generation from one uh, property. And I, I don't feel that there's going to be a perceptible impact on the, the volume of traffic on the road. And the roads are of, of varying width along, it's all made, uh, vehicle speeds are low, traffic volumes are low. Um, so in terms of highway safety, I don't see any particular impact from this development of highway safety in this road. Well, thanks, I mean, obviously, I, I defer to the professional knowledge of the um, the officer there, but this committee's got to make a decision in terms of what we as lay people feel. It seems to me as though even back in back in 1984, a professional officer was advising that there was no highway grounds for refusal, yet a, a planning inspector 
actually disagree with so I, I, listening to the board council and listening to the residents I do think this could actually be quite dangerous to be allowed an application to go ahead. David. Thank you Chair, this was uh, one of the few places I haven't been before uh, but to say it was uh, really high really for me in um, uh, relation to early development. The application as, it, as, it, as it's laid before me, all those members that were on the site visit realised where I stood on the plot and asked this decided because it looked very tight to me. I know it's outline application that it's the proposal is that the plot be divided so that we have two developments on it rather than the one at the moment. I thought it was rather tight, I'm going to say. I listened to the comments and the arguments about the access onto uh, an elected highway. The one thing that hasn't been mentioned yet is number 32, which is, if you look at it, one slightly to the left. The access to that actually comes up that boundary right onto that corner. So, oh, if that number, if that property is, has no problem with gaining access and egress onto that particular highway, I can't see any problem with a vehicle coming out of this particular building. It was, it was interesting to see, it was nice to see. I, I honestly thought, when I saw the, the area staked out, it looked very tight to me, I'm going to say that. Um, but given the changes in the legislation, Acceptable, acceptable thing to uh, the site to be split. The major thing is the proposed development is going to come afterwards. That's a very good And that would be subject to another planning application. Okay, any other comments from anyone? David? Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I think, as I said with the previous development that we discussed on this. Uh, road some time ago. This really is a unique backwater which I think needs preserving if at all possible. Um, the site visit, as others have said, was very illuminating and very interesting. Um, I do know that it is an outline application and we have to take that into account. We're trying to agree in principle whether or not there should be a development in the form of residential property on that site. But having got to the site and having seen the site, I was very, very disturbed at the size of the marked out building because it seemed to show totally, the separation distances were just about there, but it seemed to show totally inadequate amenity space um, relative to the amenity space that are provided with all the adjacent properties that are in the area. And I did think it was great concern over um, a house of that size being constructed ever at that location. Now as we've said it's outline, so in fact when it comes to uh, reserved matters that would also be brought before this committee for consideration. And if we felt at that stage that the development was too large, we would have the opportunity to say so, because there's nothing, if we were to approve this tonight, there is nothing in what we approve tonight that would prevent us from ensuring that they didn't build a four-story block of flats there for 25 occupiers. So at least we've got that on our side. The other thing that concerned me, um, basically, was the, the access provision. There's no question about it. That would not be allowed anywhere else in the borough with the sight lines and displays onto uh, a road that was adopted by the council. I mean, we have an appalling situation there where what was formerly a pedestrian access has apparently, and I use the word advisedly, been opened out to create access for the dwelling for vehicular vehicles, whereas previously it's just been something that a lawnmower could be pushed through or agricultural machinery to look after a garden. And it seems to have preempted our decision tonight to turn that into an access uh, provision. And I think that access provision, from my construction and engineering background, I think it's appalling. I think that access is asking for trouble because we're going to get more and more vehicles going down that road, obviously, as traffic improves over the years, particularly vehicles that are going to be required to go there to build the damn thing in the first place, pardon my language. So I think we're asking for trouble from an access provision to just rubber stamp an access which is clearly not the sort of access that we would commit on a road that we have adopted. So I'd like some officers' comments on that because I'm very, very uneasy about giving it permission for that reason. Um, and I think the, the, the final point really is I feel that by rubber stamping an access provision, 
this would allow similar problems to occur, similar situation to occur elsewhere that we'd have no provision over. So, in summary, I can't honestly think at this stage of a sustainable reason for refusing it. I'd like to think and hear what other people have to say. I don't like what's going on here for the two reasons. One, the building as presented to us at the moment is too large, inappropriate, incongruous, and markedly changes the size of, um, access, of sites on that particular road. And two, I think the access provision is totally inadequate and it's going to exacerbate problems which are already there. But I'd like to hear what others have to say. Thank you, Chair. Keith, would you like to come back on the access provision? Uh, yeah, thank you. Through you, Chair. Um, I mean, members who went on the site visit will recall that along, you know, along Gores Lane there are a number of accesses coming in at different angles onto the lane, at different gradients. Um, some of them have boundary fences or um, trees that come right up to the access and block visibility. On, on, a, uh, on an adopted street, that wouldn't necessarily be um, acceptable, as you say. Um, but given the nature of this road, in, in an unadopted um, lane such as this, I think people who use these lanes expect that sort of thing. These are the sorts of accesses you get down these unadopted lanes, unfortunately. Um, now, I, I mean, yeah, ideally, a 90 degree access onto the, onto the site would be beneficial, but I don't see any reason why um, this access shouldn't, shouldn't be allowed um, in terms of being sufficient reason to refuse the proposal uh, for highway safety. I think my, my concern is I understand exactly where you're coming from, but I don't like to see this planning committee uh, creating a circumstance where we're exacerbating an ex a, a, a problem that's already there. And I don't. I think we ought to give serious consideration to that. I don't believe it's right for us to, as I've said, to rubber stamp something which makes something worse that we already know is bad. And that is my major concern. And this is why I was looking, in all honesty, to officers to maybe come up. Um, with something that we could use as a reason for refusal. I don't think there's any other reason for refusal we could put forward, but access provision is such a major problem in so many areas in the borough. I don't like us seeing us rubber stamping something as tortuous as this access will prove to be. Access onto Gorse Lane doesn't require planning permission. Um, I don't know if it's highway standards or not, it just doesn't need planning permission. So the creation of that for access didn't require planning permission, so no, no planning controls have been breached. Any additional comments? Yeah, just to briefly pick up on a point that Dave mentioned earlier, that this is um, our planning <coughs> permission. So what we're um, discussing here tonight is whether we agree with the principle of splitting the land in order for a second dwelling to be built on it. Um, for me, um, when Dan goes late, and I'm sure I'll be going back down there again if it's approved tonight, um, <laughs> but the point I'd make is I think that the plot sizes, whilst you know, there's a fair point to be made that they're not sort of, um, it's not consistent with the lane, they're not exactly equal sizes, and so you know, I don't think there's a case to be made there for a development. Denise? Thank you, Jeff. Can I move? The officer's recommendations for, for approval. So we have a seconder. Thank you, Matt. All those in favour of the officer's recommendations to approve. Those against? That's carried. Thank you. If we move to agenda item 8, uh, Land of Church Road, Seymour Street, pages 47 to 54. Matthew, can have a presentation for this. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, this was an application that was approved by the Planning Committee at its last meeting on the 23rd of July. That approval was subject to a Section 106 agreement securing the provision of affordable housing. 
The council still owns the land that is subject to these proposals and the sale of the land to the developers is still some way off. Therefore, the council cannot enter into a section 106 agreement with the developer as they do not yet own any interest in the land. It is therefore proposed to grant planning permission for this development without the um, section 106 agreement. The provision of affordable housing will be secured through a developer's agreement with the council which the applicants have agreed to enter into. Therefore, the 25 affordable units will still be secured without holding up to the release of the planning permission. The proposals also include for affordable units that have been designed into the, into the development, which will be subject to the approval, um, and the developer's agreement will be signed imminently. In fact, I'm told the developer's agreement is to be signed. It will be signed next week. It's, it's, with, um, it's with the solicitors. The proposals remain as previously approved by the committee in July and over the aspect. Qualified petition relating to the inclusion of apartments was uh, was received, and the application is recommended for approval. Okay. Are there any comments? Okay. Thank you. Sorry, we do have a petition on this one. Would the petition like to come forward? There is reward councillor here. Okay. Can I open it up to committee, please? Bob. Thanks, Chair. Just in terms of process, we've never been back to the development development agreement had been signed prior to this meeting and in terms of uh, the solicitor could comment does the agreement have the same force as the uh, section 106 agreement in terms of enforceability? Uh, the, uh, the development agreement will probably have the same that the section 106 would have entered into and it's still a contractual arrangement so yes it will have the same force. Through you, Chair. The reason why the, um, the development agreement wasn't signed before it came to committee was we were hoping to have had it signed this week, but unfortunately that hasn't happened because the solicitor for the development side has been away on holiday. But, and they are back, and we told that that agreement will be signed on Monday. Um, so it should be held up um, um, the process over there. Okay, thank you.
development proportion within the within the overall development. Uh, I have been reassured by officers that this is not without precedent, and maybe Matthew could just confirm that. But, but there has been similar, I suppose, approvals in the past for these lines. I mean, on that basis, I'm happy to support approval, uh, assuming Matthew can provide that reassurance. Uh, thank you for you, Chair. Uh, yes, we have used development agreements in the past on a number of schemes uh, where the developer uh, doesn't have any interest in the land and the land is owned sold solely by the council. And as I say, the development agreement has been draft, drafted. In fact, it, all it's waiting for is the, is the other side's signature. Um, and, and that should happen on Monday, so everything is in place. I think as Paul says, it's a shame it wasn't done for this meeting, but unfortunately we are where we are. Um, Matthew, you've moved to approve. Do you have a seconder? Thank you, Denise. All those in favour of approval? That's unanimous. Thank you. That's carried. I'm conscious of the fact that 